I showed you a demonstration of uh, the thermoelectric generator by applying it on my body and I also in fact on the hot side I just rubbed a little bit to create a little more um, you know a little more heat and uh, we measured it went to quite a significant uh, higher uh, voltage. So, what does it mean? It means that the body heat and the ambient if you are able to get some temperature differential you will get reasonably good power output. Okay. How does it compare with uh, photovoltaic systems? Well, in terms of uh, power density I would say uh, thermoelectric generators are even 30 to 50 times higher. Okay. But then lot of paraphernalia circuit and lot of uh, adjustments have to be done to get the thermoelectric generator to actually work and give you something useful. Nevertheless, if you find a nice application then this is the best place this is the best kind of uh, a, a, a energy harvester to actually try out your circuit. Let us think of some alt, some kind of a nice uh, application. One thing is let us say you are interested in finding out you have your household geyser right and uh, for some reason assume that you have access to some uh, you know some part where uh, the uh, water okay the water that is uh, getting uh, you know getting heated inside you have access to that uh, temperature okay you are able to access the uh, the place where the system is uh, you can feel the heat right then i mean it's a little bit hypothetical at this stage uh, inlet is cool outlet is um, you have hot water you have uh, stored in the geyser if you are able to harvest this this temperature that is one side of the tag you uh, connect it to you uh, as essentially interface it to see the one that we had in our hand mm, here you have a hot side yeah so this is the hot side one side is the hot and the other is the cold so as uh, uh, you know as thick as this if you are able to do that then you could use that to measure certain critical parameters of the geyser itself for instance the temperature of the water itself can be measured by putting a temperature sensor right. So, you take the tag you take the tag okay, and then you connect it to some piece of electronics you piece connect it to some electronics okay. what you should get will be a V out let us say I like this 3.3 volts because it seems to be more and more standard. Um, and uh, you get ground. So, you connect this to some system which essentially has the um, thermistor let us say let me write it neatly th thermistor right. S T E R I think is it yeah uh, so this is essentially a thermistor which is connected to um, some sort of let us say an SOC and um, uh, which also has some communication ability and a microcontroller and of course this is connected to some ADC port right and this tag is like a power supply for this. So, as long as you have temperature differential uh, which is uh, let us say room temperature you will have let us say is uh, 25 degrees Celsius and water is boiling and it is uh, even going up to let us say 50 degrees okay. and uh, you are uh, able to keep this surface in contact with that you perhaps have a nice way to harvest because you now have a temperature differential which is dt essentially okay some people even say uh, yeah they use this word dt which is a very important uh, uh, which is then so it is a temperature difference differential okay difference in temperature um, uh, so that if you are able to maintain is something like 25 in this case you will get sufficiently good amount of power uh, which you can harvest the question is how much power 
everybody keeps worried in fact this is the question that you will have to keep uh, how much power do we get what can we do with it ok. So, this is I think I am sure is prime in your mind uh, it is all good but uh, can you what can you do surely you will be able to drive this uh, thermistor uh, directly without any battery or anything with this electronics uh, this is basically power conditioning electronics like this is the power electronics I will say power electronics and uh, using this power electronics this gives you this stable output voltage and then you should be able to do continuously you should be able to sense comfortably it should work if you are able to maintain this temperature difference uh, in a sustained manner. The real challenge is dear friends how do you maintain this temperature differential continuously. It appears that what I said is a very nice uh, solution provided you can actually pull it off. The cold side it is insufficient if you keep it at ambient right when I say ambient you cannot get away by keeping it at ambient because very soon the hot side heat flow because you have a flow of heat from the hot side to the cold side you will attain this 50 quickly back here. This is going to create a problem for you therefore dear friends it is insufficient to maintain it at 25 degrees ambient instead you may have to keep it in contact with the water flow pipe right. So, you have a water pipe and, uh, and outside of the water pipe you will have to keep this cold side. The hot side should be the other side the other side which is the uh, thin one that should be in touch with the uh, a place where you can tap into the, uh, the surface over which the water is the hot water is actually in contact with. Then you will be able to harvest and keep this sustained, but if there is no water flowing and you just want to keep it in ambient I do not think it will work ok. So, this is a very interesting thing another uh, this is a very important thing. So, maintaining this temperature difference is the key please note because very soon heat flow um, is uh, indeed an issue. All of this means in physics terms th right what does it mean it simply means everything about thermal resistance thermal resistance if you have a low thermal resistance you have this problem in fact tags really have this problem that their thermal resistance is pretty low and uh, it is also. So, this is one part. So, you must keep this you must bear this in mind that uh, because of thermal resistance change in thermal resistance you will have to ensure that this temperature differential is maintained uh, in a sustained manner. You must look up the data sheets look up data sheets which will allow you to uh, which will give you some specification on the thermal resistance of this uh, particular tech that you have. So, but as electrical engineers it is just not about thermal resistance, but it is also about the electrical resistance right electrical resistance of the tech that you are in interested which is nothing but the source resistance source resistance also called the source resistance. I will put down some numbers from the tech that we used the hot side if it is maintained at 40 ok and the cold side is maintained at 30 Celsius you will get a voltage at match load ok which will be about 0 0.2 volts that is 200 millivolts ok and current you will get 0 0.045 amps that means you will get 45 milliamps ok and so this is the volt spec this is the current spec and this is the most important thing will be match load will be match load will be 
4.5 ohms ok. This is a number given by the manufacturer I am not inventing anything here. Second if T H is 60 T C cold side is at 30 degrees Celsius ok. You will get um, a voltage the match load voltage voltage at match load will be 0 0.6 volts and uh, current will be amps will be 0 0.11 amps ok um, 110 milliamperes and uh, the match load ok I should write it here because match load just to be consistent match load is uh, 50 5.2 ohms. So, you can see as the temperature differential uh, difference in temperature here it is 10 um, and here it is 30 right. You get higher voltage and higher current uh, also the match load resistance will continuously keep uh, increasing. So, the tech that we uh, this particular specification of the tech you may be interested in knowing is from a company called TEC I bought this from TEC and this particular tech is indeed TEG um, 2 slash a uh, 2 dash 1 2 6 LDT for body and sensor power thermoelectric electric harvesting applications. So, uh, in this design for IOT course you may have an idea of uh, designing a wearable right. And uh, you may be wondering if I design a wearable I will have to put a battery definitely you will have to put one uh, one option is to put a battery because if it is measuring a critical parameter you cannot be uh, hunting for uh, temperature differences uh, when you are actually measuring that parameter you will put a battery. This uh, tag can be used for charging the battery continuously wherever uh, the temperature difference whenever temperature differentials are available you should be able to harvest from that and then from that you should be able to keep charging the battery. So, it is a nice solution indeed which you can seriously consider to if you are trying to build at the end of uh, you know going through this uh, uh, this uh, you know with these inputs that we are discussing uh, at this stage ok. So, the tech that we have is a 40 uh, cross 40 mm cross 5.45 uh, mm ok. All the is, is actually you can see it is just a little over half a centimeter thick and it has a 40 cross 40 4 centimeter cross 4 centimeter um, into a, a, a thickness of about 5 5 about half a centimeter 5.45 mm and um, it is a good tag indeed and as you can see it seems to be giving reasonably good output voltage uh, from uh, directly from the uh, you know from the ambient maintaining the ambient. If you are in an AC room surely temperature will be at uh, 36 and uh, room ambient will be at uh, uh, around 20 or even 22 depending on comfort level. So, you should get a clear safe uh, 10 degree differential ok delta t will be about uh, at, uh, 10, 10 and with that you should be able to get reasonable amount of power from what we have seen this uh, from this uh, specification. So, this is the story of uh, the tag and uh, uh, so how did we go about uh, power conditioning this tag and uh, what is the story behind uh, this tag with respect to um, you know understanding the kind of uh, numbers that people talk about in terms of power output and uh, this particular power condition 
and power electronics that is associated. Let us revisit that picture and then let us uh, see uh, to put everything back into place. So, for that what I will do? I will go back to this picture right. We started with this uh, uh, LTC 3109 as you can see the tech of interest has been discussed the one that we purchased and we were trying. This power electronic uh, part is this uh, LTC 3109. This is a 1 is 200 uh, transformer we will discuss that in a moment. And we also mentioned about source resistance which is uh, which has to be as low as possible. Um, and, um, and then we talk about a microcontroller radio and all that. Um, and of course, what is important is uh, you see now we got a body sensor right body um, body heat harvesting uh, sensor which I wrote here the here I had wrote written about the fact that this has a application for body sensor right. So, this for body body and sensor power uh, applications ok. This one essentially what we were doing is uh, so, this is a very nice um, uh, uh, you know energy harvester all right. What is the correct uh, power electronics uh, that you should choose ok because this company TEC has not indicated any specific uh, company that we should uh, use any vendor particular vendor uh, chip uh, energy harvesting chip for uh, uh, harvesting to use uh, to be chosen. So, we were investigating uh, this in the process we found that this LTC 3109 seems to be an appropriate one. So, let us put down that we have an LTC 3109 this is LTC 3109 uh, uh, DC DC of course, everything around what we discuss in uh, till now has already been that we are talking about boost converters. And nicely these boost converters often give you an LDO output as well apart from the actual V out and they also give you something called a V store right. And V store is meant for applications where some amount of energy stored in the V store is pumped into V, v out during the time when the input harvester is not there. For some reason if the harvester is absent. Uh, the energy for a very short duration from V store goes to uh, V out. Here um, with respect to this particular tech of interest that uh, we, are, we, are, we are talking about as I mentioned to you this is 40 mm and this is uh, 40 mm as well. I cannot show you thickness on this uh, thing, but imagine that it is thick enough which is 5.45 mm and that has to be connected to something we mentioned is the 1 is to 100 um, step up transformer ok. Here there are some design considerations and we will discuss that in a, as we go along. Um, when to choose 1 is to 100, when to choose 1 is to 20 for instance and when to choose when to choose 1 is to 50 for instance it is quite obvious right. So, you would if your input um, is typically of the order of uh, 30 millivolt that means just coming from body sensors then you have to choose 1 is to 100. If your input is more than this let us say it is 50 millivolt and so on 50 or 60 millivolt then you do not need this kind of 1 is to 100 step up. So, you could choose 1 is to 20 and accordingly if the voltage goes up you can then choose 1 is to um, 1 is uh, so sorry 1 is to 50 and then 1 is to 20 is also our possibilities as this input voltage goes up. Now, when will the input voltages go up it depends on your application right. The geyser application I mentioned is giving you a good amount of temperature differential in which case you will perhaps not need a 1 is to 100 you will be able to get away um, even uh, sometimes you may even be able to get away without any transformer directly interface it to LTC 3105 which is good for us. In some situations if the voltage, so you have to actually find out what is your harvesting opportunity in terms of the temperature differential find out that then choose this particular transformer ok. That is the key to what I am trying to uh, get at. Now, uh, <coughs> the problem with this uh, tag is this, this particular tag is that um, you must I must put this down right I will put it down in 
capitals heat sinking you must do heat sinking there is no other way the cold side should be able to with i mean draw the uh, the heat which is emanating from the uh, hot side it should be able to pull out that heat otherwise temperature differentials will go down and then uh, nothing will come so you have to look at how to design uh, a good uh, heat sinking ability for uh, this uh, uh, for this uh, system okay um, so there'll be uh, uh, some sort of data sheets uh, there will be a data sheet which will tell you. So, you must go back to your data sheet and uh, carefully look at what are those data what is it that the uh, curves in the data sheet are actually telling you uh, about the current ability uh, for different input voltages and different uh, turns ratios. So, this transformer again is the issue. So, you must uh, look at uh, so that is a that is the most important thing. So, you must look at uh, temperature differential. So, I will say D capital T 1 then input output everything input uh, voltage uh, uh, input uh, do showing output current capability for different input voltages right. So, input voltage output current all of that should be essentially coming up to you from the data sheet ok. So, um, so that is uh, the most uh, important thing. In uh, general, um, you can say you will get 15 mill from what the manufacturer is claiming, you will get about 15 milliwatt uh, at the output. In terms of power output, you will get about 15 milliwatt of output uh, maximum, and uh, the minimum you will get this is maximum, and then this also will be about the minimum will be roughly about uh, 50 microwatt this will be the minimum power ok. So, that is uh, another uh, important thing. Now, question is uh, whether you will get continuous power is the question continuous power O u continue O u yes continuous power. Well, I do not think uh, you will get continuous uh, power ok. If you may if you are able to keep the uh, temperature differential for a long time for uh, for uh, in a sustained manner why not surely you will get, but in practice that will be a little bit uh, difficult ok. Now, <coughs> you will have to also battle several things on why did you choose this uh, tech in the first place. I mentioned to you that the data sheet did talk about uh, the fact that it is meant for body uh, heat harvesting and for body sensor and all that, but I could have chosen uh, other some other vendor also right. And uh, from that uh, so, there may be a similar product from other vendors. Well, um, so the question really is like this right. Um, it will de basically depend on the average power for the given application. So, the question really is about the dt. So, the question is about dt is the is the key and the uh, application average power so dt and average power. See these are the two important uh, things you will have to um, worry about. Um, again the uh, the the manufacturer gives a lot of nice numbers. I would like to stick to what the manufacturer is saying. Uh, rather than speculating anything from my experience on working with tags because that I have looked at several tags and I think you should just go by uh, by looking at the data sheets studying it carefully around the data sheet you should be able to plan your design. What the uh, manufacturer is actually claiming is that okay, he talks in terms of uh, the manufacturer is actually talking about uh, uh, if you take uh, uh, you get an output power 
the output power of a typical teg of a typical teg um, is roughly uh, 90 microwatt per degree Kelvin for every 1 square centimeter of teg area. This what it simply means is this means that you are maintaining um, a good heat sink that is very important I am not even taking that taking uh, that into uh, um, into any account. But what is usable it turns out that this is what you will get output power of the teg is this is what you will get. But if you do all this LTC 3109 conditioning 1 is to 100 and ultimately what is important is this V out right what is it that you will get at V out and the I out the, the current and voltage out at the output if you see they claim the manufacturer makes some nice observation he says you will not get this. So, I will strike this off this is input if this is the input what you will get will be 25 micro watt per degree Kelvin for every square centimeter area of a typical tech ok. Um, that is what you will get. So, if you take uh, 40 mm cross 40 mm ok that is your uh, area that you have uh, with a dt of uh, let us say 10 degrees 10 degree Kelvin right 10 degree uh, uh, with the 10 degree Kelvin across will give you roughly 4 milliwatt will give you about 4 milliwatt ok. So, that is a good enough uh, power in my opinion with all the low power electronics that um, we have. Uh, so, this is reasonable right you should be able to use this uh, 4 milliwatt power in a very effective manner with some good power management algorithm this is a good number. I would say this is a very good number to work on ok. So, do look at the manufacturers data sheets carefully and go ahead with the design ok. So, here the point is that uh, we have assumed source resistance to be 2.5 ohms of source resistance. that is the key point the source resistance assumed will be 3 point uh, uh, sorry 2.5 ohms. So, which is also another important uh, consideration the uh, energy harvesting applications energy harvesting applications uh, using tags you will obviously choose a tag this is a very trivial answer right maximum output voltage and maximum output current you will want to go and buy that tag which gives you the maximum uh, power um, maximum power output right. So, this also means um, obviously with lowest source resistance this is always the nice thing please note maximum output voltage maximum output current and lowest source resistance the smallest the smaller it is the very good thing it uh, good for the system to give a good amount of power output. Uh, they also mention that uh, larger tags larger size tags like what we are discussing about 40 mm cross 40 mm this is a pretty large size tag. 4 centimeter cross 4 centimeter will also have a uh, lower um, thermal resistance will also have a lower thermal resistance indeed a pain right this is a problem. So, your heat sinking should be very good because very soon the hot side and the cold side will uh, come into an equilibrium because of this lower uh, thermal uh, resistance problem. So, heat sink you have to that is why I said that geyser example looks a little shaky at the moment, but automobile may be good 
you have the radiating uh, radiator uh, some coolant and uh, some circulation of uh, or even if the vehicle is moving the uh, the engine surface can be hot uh, wherever you have placed the tag uh, but because of uh, circulating air the uh, cold side may continue to remain at some reasonable uh, point and that can be definitely in an automobile uh, uh, you know in the engine compartment part of the automobile that it is very possible that you should be able to harvest um, significant amount of high power from that system. Also these tags are meant for this kind of very high temperature uh, applications hot side can really go to high temperatures. So, again you will have to choose based on your application you may have to choose what kind of temperatures these um, tags can withstand. Also note that you should not reverse the hot and cold side cold side cannot withstand high temperatures. So, if you touch the cold side onto the, uh, to the engine side which is emanating lot of heat then you may actually the tech may actually go bad and may not be able to you may not be able to use it. So, take care of these simple uh, precautions before you start you know using it in a particular application. Let me complete the story. So, this uh, low th thermal resistance is an issue and therefore, which means you will have to put good amount of uh, heat sink sorry heat sink S i n k becomes uh, definitely a critical uh, requirement for um, uh, for this. <coughs> but if you are using large tech which means area is of no constraint to you putting a heat sink is also not an issue right. If you have uh, if you have sufficiently large area I would not recommend um, big tags for body based uh, systems, but at the moment they seem to be the only ones which can give you sufficiently good power that is the issue. So, you may even want to examine uh, small uh, tiny um, uh, nano pelts or micro pelts micro pelt in fact, there is a company called micro pelt just google it you will find a company called micro pelt. Here the source uh, source resistance of these uh, systems um, is uh, roughly I think um, I from my memory 200 ohms or something like 2 to 300 ohms. See what it all of this is leading to something very interesting right. Um, if you have higher source resistance to begin with the output voltage that you will get from the tech will be high that is clear ok. Whereas, if you take the lower heat uh, this uh, lower source resistance uh, tags like 2 ohms, 2.5 ohms, 5 ohms and all that the output voltage will be in the order of a few hundreds of millivolts, tens and hundreds of millivolts. I would say tens, hundreds of millivolt. So, you do not even have to worry so much about um, if you first thing that you can look up in a data sheet is what is the output voltage. Let us say he says uh, 30 millivolt, 50 millivolt I can give you 50 millivolt I have a circuit for 50 millivolt to give you 3.3 using uh, power electronics and all that or if he says I will give you a 200 millivolt or 100 millivolt and so on. First thing to infer straight away is its source resistance must be in the order of a few hundreds of ohms 200. 300 ohms this is very clear first is first uh, I would say um, rough first cut um, understanding why why am I stressing this why am I stressing this I am stressing this because your choice of power electronic chip becomes very critical here. You take the wrong uh, power electronic vendor chip for a thermoelectric application and connect it you get nothing in other words the source resistance should match the input resistance of the chip right. For instance, if you take this TEG that we are discussing from this company called TEC TEC and connect it to the same vendor some other chip uh, which is also an energy harvesting chip is an incorrect decision. I will give you what the vendor himself says. He says if you take my TEG uh, my, uh, my chip my chip 3109 LTC 3109 or 3108 uh, I assume 
I assume the source resistance inputs uh, the source resistance kind of text that are going to be connected are the order of 2.5 ohms to 5 ohms because his own load in load resistance is around this and unless the load resistance the load resistance and the source resistance these are not matched if they are not matched you have serious uh, you know extracting you have serious problems of extracting any useful power from that system. Keep this picture in mind that is why your design is uh, has to your choice of component becomes very critical ok. So, micro pelt is another company I mentioned to you whose source resistance which uh, is in the order of 200 to 300 ohms do not choose this LTC 3109 or 3108 choose some other one what he recommends on the micro pelt website is from this vendor from uh, the chip from uh, this vendor T i which is B q 25504 or he even suggests um, the uh, LTC you can also use LTC 3105 with MPPC we already discussed this. So, with MPPC um, you can use LTC 3105 or you can interface it to B q 25504 remember whatever you do you have a beautiful tool in your hand and do not forget to use that tool and what is that tool simulation tool right. Every vendor will have a simulation tool you just have to look out for it. If you choose a component from uh, vendor A look for a tool from vendor A it will be there. In fact, BQ has a simulation tool for this BQ chip. Uh, the uh, ones that we spent a little time trying to show you, uh, the this vendor uh, Linear Technologies has a, has his uh, tool, typically LT Spice. You go to some other company, they will have a tool. They may even have an online tool, a simulation tool, which is you feed in values and then you will get some, uh, you know, system uh, design related. Uh, part numbers and uh, components of your of that would be required for rigging up your circuit. So, lot of system design challenges building the IOT system is it will become start becoming very comfortable if you know where to find things and how to do things that is all I am trying to say ok. Um, for instance, if you say this is my input voltage and uh, this is all I can harvest from the environment uh, and the differential that I am able to maintain feed in those values it will actually tell you what kind of components would be required. Do you have to put a 1 is to 100 should you put a 1 is to 50 should you put a 1 is to 20 um, step up transformer what are the other components what should be the inductor value for instance output inductor value because do not forget this is a buck and uh, this is a uh, boost converter right. Um, so, either boost or buck the output inductor is a critical thing here. So, that will be uh, will definitely be there. So, let me draw your attention to the simulation tool for LTC 3109 we can discuss that I can show you the simulation and then uh, please download and try it yourself. If you do not have a tech it does not matter right you have a PC or a laptop you have an internet connection download the tools which are available do not be sold to any specific vendor all vendors you will have to examine different vendors and then try and mix match change make changes to the simulation parameters based on the models given by the vendor or closest to what the vendor provides run your simulation once you are satisfied then go about investing uh, to buy uh, these kits or components to design your circuit. So, that part is something you will have to look up just now. So, let me turn my attention to this uh, nice uh, simulation uh, which I have done on uh, for P on P spice. So, this is the uh, LT spice LT 3109 you can see that uh, this top side wherever I have pointed my cursor this top side essentially is the uh, transformer which uh, has been used. I did not make changes to this uh, circuit which I also found on the web. 
So, let us not waste much time I will expect you that I expect that you will be able to um, modify whatever is available here and then start um, you know and actually uh, try out uh, do a hands on by this yourself. So, you see now from 0 volts the output is slowly picking up and this simulation will run for a while and uh, you can essentially try everything that you want you can modify parameters I will just stop it here so that we can spend a little moment or two uh, here. So, you essentially can change parameters you can change the output capacitance you can change the transformer you can change the kind of source that you are looking at and then re-simulate the circuit and uh, before you actually prototype anything. So, what is important is to really run this thoroughly before you uh, finally use it. So, this is in summary a big summary of all that was required uh, with respect to uh, use of uh, thermo thermal energy um, with um, uh, when you talk about energy harvesting for the, the power section of um, the uh, um, embedded system or the IOT system that we plan to uh, we actually we plan to build. Two points two points come up uh, to summarize or uh, no to further um, uh, you know to further let us say uh, you know sort of consolidate our learning on uh, use of uh, tags is one thing that uh, come up is can I use tags for charging a battery. The answer is yes, but you should be careful that uh, you should actually pass the output of the tag into the power management or battery charging IC of the battery. So, in other words you have the V out coming from the tag from the boost converter um, of the, um, the let us say LTC 3109 or boost converter chip um, and this one should actually go through the battery charging chip and then it should connect to the battery. This will take care of all the over voltage and under voltage protection um, which will ensure because particularly if you are if you are uh, charging a lithium ion battery then uh, you obviously will have to connect uh, a temperature sensor right. So, it will be connected to the temperature sensor because you do not want to charge when the battery uh, during charging if the battery gets very very hot there is a chance that this might even explode. So, lithium is an explosive so you have to take care and use all possible precautions to ensure that um, the charging is safe. So, you should not directly um, you know charge that that is another important thing. Second uh, thing that occurs is what is the uh, uh, efficiency of this uh, system. Typically I would say it is anywhere between in tags if you are using the efficiency can be anywhere between 20 and 40, per, uh, 40 percent unlike solar which is uh, you know people say even you solar theoretical efficiency uh, or efficiency on paper is 26 percent most uh, panels do not give you that kind of uh, efficiencies and the discussion I did with respect to solar after all the conversion and all the losses and taking care of all the climate uh, weather changes I have just taken 10 percent and I gave you those numbers with respect to 10 percent. Quite like that in the tech world people do claim that uh, it is in the order of 20 to 40 percent, um, but there are uh, does not include all the losses, losses are not included. So, I let you uh, judge for yourself based on uh, several of these things um, before you decide the actual uh, efficiency of the system. Let us now move on 
to another type of let us now make a clean slate right. So, I will rub this and I will make a clean slate. Let us now talk about another type of energy harvester right harvester and uh, as usual let us begin with the demonstration of uh, this uh, energy harvester. Um, then we will see uh, how this uh, the what kind of applications this particular energy harvester actually has. Uh, Madhuri my colleague here will actually demonstrate another type of harvester and what she is actually going to do is uh, you will see that there is a nice enclosure. This enclosure is, uh, is made out of 3D it is a 3D printed uh, enclosure and uh, it is a 3D printed uh, enclosure here and you will see carefully that there is a plunger here there is something to like a press which uh, she can actuate and uh, she will press that in a moment and what you will see is uh, if she presses that uh, plunger uh, essentially it is like a switch right. Uh, you will see this mechanism inside getting also depressed and a certain amount of voltage being generated ok. So, let her adjust the time base such that you will be able to capture a nice uh, system. What she actually has in her hand is nothing but an electromagnetic switch basically linear motion harvester you can call it. So, a linear motion of this plunger there is a coil and, um, and uh, there is a magnet inside of course and every time she presses there is a small amount of uh, voltage that is induced across this uh, coil and um, it which is um, essentially a source of energy for the uh, system. As you can see this can be used in many applications where uh, one can uh, can you press that again yes. So, you can see that these systems can be used for um, uh, essentially uh, you know pressing um, uh, for uh, harvesting energy for using them as push button switches ok. So, this is uh, essentially a electromagnetic switch uh, which is harvesting energy from kinetic a kinetic energy harvester which uh, essentially uh, is a source of power um, to, uh, to power in applications where push buttons uh, push buttons are required. Where should we where, so what is this uh, what is this uh, is this is this the actual so what do you do with that kind of waveform that you get that is an AC waveform right. Obviously, you have to um, build a small circuit around this uh, push button switch. So, let us develop that circuit also and see what actually happens at the output of the this kind of a harvester. What you will have to do is so this is a linear motion harvester ok. This harvester is essentially I will represent it like a block and um, I will have to connect it to a bridge rectifier bridge rectifier. Um, and output can be stored in a small capacitor here ok. What I have used is a 33 microfarad capacitor to store our energy and what I have used here are BAT 54 diodes. These are short key diodes, short key barrier diodes and um, very effective for this kind of energy harvesting applications <coughs> essentially these are S C H O T T K Y short key diodes meant for energy harvesting applications. 
um, this diodes, these diodes, these uh, short key diodes uh, have you have to note several things about these diodes. Basically, their volta forward voltage drop, forward voltage drop is dependent on the forward current essentially. If the forward current is something like uh, 0 0.1 milliamperes, the forward voltage drop is 240 millivolts and if the forward current the current drawn through the diode goes up to 100 milliamperes, then you will have a forward voltage drop of about 800 millivolts. Again I draw your attention to the data sheet, please look up the data sheet, design everything around the data sheet, this is the key point. Okay. So, and in fact the data sheet will tell you nicely, uh, all this data in fact all these numbers that I am putting out here are actually from data sheets. right? So, the whole design can, if you have the idea right, the rest of the thing can actually come out from the data sheet itself. All right. So, here is the linear harvester, linear harvester which is basically an electromagnetic switch. This is from a company called Cherry, you can use it from Cherry, it is called the Cherry switch. You can also use Eco 200 from N Ocean, N Ocean. This is another company which where by which you can buy this kind of linear harvesters, use them, put them through a bridge rectifier circuit uh, and uh, essentially uh, store that energy and use this energy. How much will you get? Again the same question, right? We think from our calculations, we get about 120 micro joules of energy we are getting about maximum of about 120 micro joules of energy. And uh, what can you do with this kind of micro joules of energy? Well, you will be surprised that you can do several nice things. First thing you can do is you can boot the microcontroller, you can boot the microcontroller, you can sense on the ADC, ADC port and you can also uh, transmit a BLE Bluetooth low energy data packet. That is all that you can do, right? And this is already good enough. Supposing you want to send an on or an off, you want to sense a position of a switch, you can do all of this with this little small harvester. How does the DC output look? That is the next question, right? Because AC, okay, you have to do all that power conditioning and all that. Let me now draw your uh, attention to the uh, DC output. Um, so for that, let us look at the the uh, DC output coming from. I have taken a snapshot of the uh, the DC output. So let me show you how that looks. This is how the uh, the output actually looks. You can see that uh, uh, this is uh, 1 volt per division. So, it is going up to a quite a high extent of about 3.3 3 volts or so, it is able to go to, uh, to roughly 3 volts plus and remains there for this 1.7, uh, 1.8 milliseconds of time um, and after which it is so this time from this point here to this point here is already good enough for you to boot the microcontroller to sense the adc and also to do a transmission of a data packet so now you see the trick you must have your crystal or crystal oscillator should come up very fast it should give you a stable clock out in microseconds microcontroller should run at a clock frequency should be quite fast, ADC conversion time should be very fast 
and you should be able to do quick communication to the BLE link BLE over whatever SPI I2C communication ports and also do a transmission of a data packet. Very tight time budget you just harvest on the fly do a transmission on the fly and be done right. This is the challenge and you should be able to write software embedded software which can essentially run all this in the given limited time of about 1.7 to 1.8 milliseconds or even 2 milliseconds uh, after which there is no more energy right. So, this is what software code will have to do uh, the magic for you to ensure that you manage the power effectively.